Here. Council member Pepin. Present. Council member Oliva. Here. Vice Mayor Snyder. Here. Mayor Halliburg. Present. All council member are present. Okay, will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Kimberly Jensen, Kimberly Shaw, or one other. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United States of, of, United America, States of America. And to the Republic. And to the Republic. For which it stands. For which it stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. Under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. With liberty and justice. With liberty for all. and justice for all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, on a, I'm on a Zoom meeting with. Okay. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are going to begin the agenda um, this evening, meeting with a uh, proclamation marking uh, August 5th through 12th of 2020 as Milbray Hanyu Peace Week uh, in uh, honoring the, um, the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's an effort that is being started by um, Sister Cities International, and we would like to honor that here in Millbrae. Um, are there any comments from the council? Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, oh, yes, I, uh, Councilman I, Pappen? Yeah, I don't think honoring is the appropriate word here in recognition. Commemorating. Yeah, Commemorating, yes. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, now let's move on to the agenda overview and staff briefing. Uh, City Manager Williams. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of the City Council, Tom Williams. Um, I'm getting a double feedback, so I've got some technical difficulties, so forgive me. Um, after okay. agenda overview of the calendar of Sorry, events the and reports of, of the meeting, claims, can, uh, can we you have everyone who's in the audience, please? Uh, so we'll move on to public communication. This is the opportunity for members of the public to speak on any item that is not on this evening's agenda. Um, speakers will have up to three minutes. We now are accepting public comments through the Zoom platform. Um, the instructions are available on the agenda um, posted on the city website. Um, you may also call in and those instructions are available as well. Um, speakers have up to three minutes and the views um, represented by speakers do not necessarily represent the views of the city council or um, the views of the city of Millbury as a whole. Okay, so um, we will begin with uh, Nathan Chan. Uh, as always, uh, I thank the city council for the opportunity to make a public comment. Um, this weekend, I was able to travel to multiple cities on the peninsula and I have to say, I was very impressed at the livelihood uh, the liveliness of a lot of the downtown areas I came across. Uh, a San, in San Carlos, San Mateo, and Burlingame, both Broadway Avenue and Burling Avenue, uh, Burlingame Avenue, uh, the main commercial streets were closed to cars and restaurants were able to take advantage of the uh, street space for outdoor seating. Uh, from what I see, uh, there were patrons to spare at many of these restaurants. So on the same bike ride where I was doing this, I made sure to go to El Camino and Broadway and Millbrae and uh, the contrast couldn't be more stark. I could see some restaurants taking advantage of very limited sidewalk space and capacity, but many others uh, weren't, were seemed to be just subsisting on takeout alone. I didn't see very many people walking around and frankly, our main street was very sleepy. I know the city council has been talking about instituting slow streets since meetings resumed in May. So I'm confused why uh, nothing has yet to be done on this. Uh, up and down the peninsula, other cities are showing us the way and that this works. I really don't think this issue needs any further study. The visual evidence seems pretty overwhelming. I think Millbridge as businesses and red residents would benefit tremendously if Broadway and El Camino frontage roads were uh, shut to cars, or at the very least, uh, the street parking could be converted and expanded so that uh, there'd be more uh, pedestrian space and street side businesses could take advantage of it. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chan. Uh, the next speaker is Courtney Davis. 
Um, I actually have comments on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you to Nathan Chan for the um, for his comments. Uh, I just wanted to echo his comments as a downtown uh, restaurant owner. Um, as cases around the country continue to spike, including in California, um, there has been a visible downturn in business. And uh, we um, are just calling for additional efforts from both the city council as well as public works. Um, and by the way, public works department has been fantastic in really helping businesses um, do outdoor dining, but uh, we clearly need a little bit more to incentivize people and to attract people back to our businesses. Um, current solutions are still relatively limited. And I think we've, um, uh, in the time since we've last talked about this matter um, or the city council last reviewed this matter, we've seen other cities like uh, Burlingame shut down Burlingame Avenue on the weekends. We've seen uh, San Mateo remove a considerable amount of parking spaces in lieu um, um, in favor of um, outdoor dining um, on top of existing parking spaces. Um, and I believe that Millbrae needs to do a little bit more um, with the ultimate goal of demonstrating to restaurant owners uh, how increased cooperation with the city, increased cooperation with each other um, can create a more unified business environment um, and all with the ultimate goal of establishing a business improvement district that can um, dramatically and meaningfully transform Millbrae's downtown. Um, so I hope that uh, we can hear a little bit more from the city. I would um, really look forward to working together with um, um, Elisa Tierney again, the rest of the uh, EVAC committee um, and everybody to see if we can find new ways to use the last few days of summer, get people out on the streets in a safe way and um, support meal raised small businesses and restaurants. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shui. Okay, um, seeing no other public comments, uh, we will close uh, public comment and move on to uh, the consent calendar. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Lee. Absolutely. Uh, can the city manager kind of uh, go over or, or, or Mr. Keelan go over and explain how, uh, our process for opening restaurants in the streets and what, what, what our plans are? Uh, yes, just real quick, we, um, and I'll look to legal counsel since this item is not on the agenda, but, but very briefly, anybody that's interested, please reach out to our public works department. The city council did adopt an urgency ordinance several months ago that allows uh, encroachment permits on the sidewalk and street closures, uh, but working closely with our downtown uh, restaurant owners, majority of them want to keep the streets open due to pickup and delivery service. Um, and uh, since we've allowed them to expand on the sidewalk and in the parking lots, uh, that's accommodated their, accommodated their needs currently. So the request from our merchants, and I know other cities have really backed off on street closures. Um, so we will continue to, to look for opportunities we're talking right now to our downtown restaurants about having a special event uh, that we do promote and close off the site, uh, close the street. But at this point in time, our restaurants have been uh, very satisfied with the urgency ordinance and uh, accommodation in on the sidewalk uh, and some of the parklets uh, and parking lots. But I, I think I think if if this if the restaurants I think staff has been very. Uh, flexible if a restaurant wants needs some special uh, special requests or would like some uh, something to help their business or other businesses the city uh, staff has been very receptive and I really want to thank you for that yeah there's a lot of our businesses have been happy with pickup and delivery right now and they're continuing to be successful uh, with that model okay let's move on to the consent calendar we have two items items five and six and I believe uh, vice mayor Schneider I believe you had a comment I'd rather comment than pull it. Is that okay? Do you want to do the comment after the vote? Sure. I'm okay. seeing. I, I, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, it, it, okay. Basically, uh, this is item number five. It's an extension of the contract with the designer for the new water tanks. I'm fine with that. My two questions are given that major portions of Millbrae along the 280 reach have now been added to the wildlife urban interface that the water tank project take that into account also take into account that that could be a good location for some of the early fire warning systems and that um, 
it's also an art opportunity. There's a water tank. I've got samples of, or I've got photographs of a water tank between Tacoma and Mount Rainier National Park. And they actually landscaped or painted a landscape all the way around the water tank. It blends right into the forest. So I hope that as the project design goes forward, they consider the wooey problem and um, like art, a potential ways. art project. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, so I like I should to, have pulled it off the agenda. Yes. I'd like to make a motion. Oh, sorry, to, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, five and six. Second. Okay, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Lee? Aye. Councilmember Pappen? Aye. Councilmember Oliva? Aye. Vice Mayor Snyder? Aye. Mayor Holliber? Aye. Consent items number five and six is passed unanimously. Okay, thank you. And we were getting some um, background noise, so maybe if the administrator can mute all of the uh, public um, attendees, and if they would like to comment uh, when, you know, as appropriate, we, they can be unmuted for public comment. Okay. Um, let's move on now to item seven. This is to receive and file the monthly general fund financial report for the period ending June 30th, 2020. Um, do we have a, uh, a presentation? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to introduce our finance director, Mr. Mike Sun, who is new to the city uh, as of a few weeks ago, and I introduced him at the last council meeting. So welcome, Mike, uh, and uh, Mr. Sun will be providing this staff presentation this evening. Thank you, Tom. Um, <clears throat> Can I go ahead and uh, get access to uh, share my screen? Should be good to go now, Mike. Okay, thank you. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor and uh, um, City Council and uh, citizens. So today I'd like to go over the um, financial report that we have that's um, ending on uh, June 30th, uh, 2020. And um, I'd like to uh, call your attention to um, the report over here. And um, I'd like to uh, just kind of point out a couple of changes that I've um, uh, made to this to show that the uh, 2020 amended budget was actually um, amended um, on or around November uh, 2019 by the administration. And then the worst case scenario was uh, adjusted on or around um, April um, 2020. So we can actually have a timeline as to uh, what's actually happened and um, we can kind of see how things have uh, moved along. So with that, I'm gonna go straight into um, what's actually happening on the revenue side and then the expenditure side. So um, as you can see for um, property tax, the actuals have um, gone past the um, amended budget amounts. Um, there is, um, a slight difference between the adjusted and the uh, actuals. And that's um, due to the cleanup payment that we're expecting uh, on or around uh, the end of August. So there's a cleanup payment that comes around the end of August. This is a pretty regular schedule um, payment that comes in. If you look at um, sales tax and um, TOT, they're actually coming in far below our um, budgeted estimates. You'll see that our amended budget um, will show that sales and use tax um, versus uh, and TOT versus the actual, there's, um, they're coming in probably close to around almost um, 24 to 25% less. Now I would like to point out that we haven't received all of the uh, TOT or transient occupancy taxes yet. There's still um, a few more coming in for um, June as well. And also for sales and use tax, we're expecting a cleanup payment um, on or around the third week of August. I would like to point out that the um, sales tax um, is actually going to be distorted for this year and for next year. And that's for a combination of different reasons. This is um, mainly due to the uh, current pandemic situation that um, we're in right now. Um, but what has happened is uh, CDTFA or the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration has a couple of programs uh, going into play. One includes um, letting um, smaller businesses defer up to $50,000 in sales tax liability for up to a 12 month period. So some of that um, sales tax will actually show up in the 2021 um, 
time period instead of in the, the 1920 piece. And then for um, some of the larger entities, there's about a 90 day delay. Um, so you'll actually see some of the 1920 sales tax probably show up around the 2021 uh, time period. Um, on to other um, revenue sources. Looking at franchise fees, we haven't received all of the uh, franchise fees yet as well. Um, this, when, when I mentioned this is the actual as of June 30th, uh, 2020, that's what we've actually received. There's still a few more payments that are actually due and uh, will be due in accounting for generally uh, acceptable accounting principles as we accrue the amounts um, and then they'll come in at, at a later date. So those are kind of the major points that we have for most of the uh, revenue um, items. Um, with that, I'm going to move down towards the um, expenses or expenditures here. And um, you'll see, and uh, there's a pretty big difference underneath the non-divisional section as well as underneath the uh, public works section. And uh, what those um, two items basically are is that there's a reduction of uh, capital transfers outs and there's also a reduction of um, capital project expenditures. Um, staff has actually found some funding sources other than the general fund for um, some projects that were originally budgeted um, for the um, general fund. So this also highlights a uh, spending freeze that was um, enacted uh, back in February from uh, the administration. And um, through prudent um, resource um, management, we've been able to reduce costs all the way across all of the uh, departments in the various areas. What you'll see is that um, we still have a structural deficit um, when you look at the revenues versus the expenditures. But if you take a look at um, the difference between what the amended budget and what the uh, current actuals look like, there's a pretty stark difference. You, uh, you'll see that there's, we're um, expecting to have about an $8 million gap. It's closer to about 1.3 um, right now. And you'll see that the um, available fund balance, what we were expecting was about 5 million. And currently it's um, close to about $12 million um, in fund balance. I'd like to um, also mention that this does not include the um, reserves, which are actually uh, budgeted um, outside of this as well. So somewhat of a, a um, better news in that aspect. Are there um, any questions? Thank you uh, for that report, Mr. Sun. Um, is uh, Vice Mayor Schneider, is that from the previous? Previous item or comment on this? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilman. Uh, let's, let's, let's go through order here. Uh, Councilwoman Pappin? Please lower your hand if uh, you don't have a comment here. Councilwoman Oliva? Yeah, I was just kind of curious. Um, this might be more not of a from a finance um, director, but how long can we maintain this budgeting? How long? How how long do you for can we? When you look at the the expenses, um, and I know that if you look at the top half of the expenses, how long can they continue to uh, maintain that budget? And I guess for the uh, might be a question for the city manager. Yeah, so I feel uh, as we adopted the budget uh, for this next fiscal year that started July 1st, I think with the cost cutting measures, uh, we can get through this next fiscal year. Um, it's obviously going to be dependent on, uh, you know, the bounce back of the economy, the status of the pandemic. Uh, and that's why we'll continue to have these monthly uh, reviews of our budget. So the council is aware of exactly where we are with our expenditures and our revenue. And if we need to make any budget adjustments uh, at, at the end of the first quarter, mid-year, or going into uh, 2021, uh, we will, um, you know, obviously bring that to the attention of the council and bring back a revised budget. But I think at this point in time, uh, at least getting through the fiscal year 2021, um, we're in relatively good shape. Because it's pretty, I mean, you've done an amazing job. So... I mean, to, I, I did not expect this at this time, um, and uh, I'm I'm very impressed. So thank you very much for whatever you guys are all doing as a, a whole team there. Well, I, I, if I may, just just also for the public uh, and 
um, everyone else is that we, you know, remember we did a significant reduction in the general fund allocation to our capital uh, project. So we did defer street maintenance and, and other uh, improvements in the city, uh, which the transfer from the general fund into our capital improvement program is significant. And so uh, deferring those projects, ex except for two, um, road reconstruction and repaving, um, we were able to, to manage our budget. Um, but with that comes, you know, delay of, of capital projects. Of course, but everything is delayed at this time. Uh, yeah. Councilman Lee? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, thank go, you. Go ahead. Um, no, so, go ahead. Uh, Councilman Oliva, did you want to finish? No, I think that's great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Councilman Lee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you, Mr. Sun. Welcome to City Mowbray. Um, thank you for pre your presentation. Um, so I just want to clarify that this is the uh, end of fiscal year report. Um, is that correct? Uh, so Council, uh, Council Member Lee, this is currently what we have data for through June 30th. We are expecting to come back to Council um, around the end of September with a preliminary report on the year-end results after all of the revenues and uh, expenditures are um, posted. Um, as I had mentioned before earlier in the um, presentation, the property tax uh, cleanup payment and the sales tax cleanup payments aren't quite in yet. Neither is uh, the rest of the um, TOT taxes. There's probably still a few more um, expenditures um, hanging out there as well. So in the end, we'll give a more comprehensive um, figure towards the end of September. Um, it's probably not going to vary too much from this, but we'll have a lot more information in, in approximately um, eight weeks. We have enough data to show a, a trend or, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the, the uh, virus has, has been, the shelter in place has been since February. Um, have we gotten enough data to give us a trend? We, we so have, that's a great, uh, go ahead, Mike. Okay. We have some, thank you, Tom. We have some um, data that we have, but um, as we've seen, it's uh, hard to predict um, with what's actually happening with things opening up and then closing again and opening up. We have a little bit of data so we can uh, make adjustments and we'll continue to constantly monitor the budget. So we'll be able to uh, make changes along the way. So as we get more information, um, I will be recommending to um, city manager and council um, any uh, amended changes as we see more information that comes in. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate staff uh, making sure we have the foot on the brakes uh, on, on certain projects. I know it, it, you know, this is this is another example in why we need to diversify our revenue streams and our revenue streams are not diversified enough. Um, and I think that uh, Millbury has a lot of hidden gems that we have not taken the potential, have not really tapped into. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, in the future that we will, uh, such things like uh, trade, uh, international trade, which could have helped us in um, making sure that uh, we can sit through any recession. Uh, that's just, that's basic, you know, basic uh, financial planning is to diversify your portfolio. So, um, and, and it's very difficult because our stock, our investment portfolio, it's very conservative. So. It's not as um, it's not as diversified as as we would like it to be. So I would also encourage um, keep encouraging the council to look at new revenue streams other than going to the um, taxpayers. Uh, we have to do the hard work of creating the business environment, uh, Mr. So uh, uh, we you know downtown and 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 elsewhere. Um, but we just can't rely on just downtown. So we have to look at other ways to raise money. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Vice Mayor Schneider, you have a Good comment? Uh, we can't hear you. Okay, third time. Welcome, Mr. Sun. Pleasure to see you, and it was nice meeting you a couple of weeks ago. Thank you for the report. I have one question, and then city manager and mayor, I have a technical question. Um, when you talk about franchise fees, 
I'm familiar with franchise fees we get from the garbage company and from utilities. Do we get franchise fees from Amazon and FedEx when they drive around the city or are they protected? We do not receive franchise fees. Is that because they're commerce? Uh, it's, uh, it has to do with our state law. The only franchise fees that, that we receive, as you had mentioned, garbage, we used to receive franchise fees um, and I, I believe we still do, but it's very low from uh, Comcast and, and other utility providers, but we do not from um, Amazon or other other vendors. That Mr. would, and since I, Mr. Sung is- I might be able to answer that question for you because I've been working on that for, this since I've started on the council. It's because they don't, uh, Amazon doesn't have a brick and mortar uh, store in Millbury. It's why it's, it, it's, it's, that's why it's one way, reason they get around that is old law, um, and, uh, and the internet companies have fought against um, us collecting, uh, collecting taxes from, but they've actually started to doing that a little bit, um, but I'm not sure how that works for- Right, for on, on sales tax. Typically, yeah, we collect a small amount of sales tax. Typically franchise right. fees are for the privilege of using the city's roads or other infrastructure is are those and given the preponderance of e-commerce right now maybe we need to go to our assemblyman and senator and say it's time for them to pay for the privilege of driving on our roads as well as the number of trees they seem to brutalize so that's just my aside um, mr sung we have our own millbury community television and they get or have historically gotten peg funding and i believe most of that peg funding is going away. If you could just put that on your radar and maybe report back to us about peg funding, because uh, at some point, MCTV may have to look for additional funding sources. Noted. And then here's a question. Someone in the audience just sent me a private message through chat. I wrote back saying that due to the Brown Act, I don't believe I can respond. We might need to do an uh, city manager, if you can tell the public, I'll turn my chat off because I believe that we're not allowed to do that. But please update and please tell the people to not private message. Thank you, council member. That's correct. We should not be certainly between council members, but also with the public and the council. If the okay, public just, is, oh, my, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah, Carter. I, I, no, I agree. I think we, we have to test out the Zoom uh, features a bit more. Okay. Um, in the in the future, we're still fairly new to this platform. So yeah. because of the Brown Act, I'm going to go ahead and save the chat and I will send it to the city so that if we ever get asked about this, it's there. Right. Correct. I just note it's there's a fine line in, in terms of using the chat to be able to acknowledge people who wish to speak during public comment. It's very useful. But I think, you know, unless we can find a way to control it, I just rely on the council members themselves not to not to use it. And, and I appreciate your action here. That's certainly very appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Conran. Thank you. Councilwoman Papin, did you have a comment on this or, or was that left over from another item? Sorry. Yes, I just wanted to add to Vice Mayor Schneider's if you're talking about any use of the roads, uh, there's a car company to the south of us called Tesla and they frequently test drive on Millbury Avenue. So I don't know what you can do about that, but just a note. Thank you, sir. Can uh, I add to uh, that? A lot of the autonomous car people are making contracts with cities, including the one that Amazon just bought in Foster City. It is a revenue generated generator for those cities like Mountain View, uh, Dublin. We were all at the Council of Cities dinner at Zox a few months back when we had those dinners. Uh, it is another potential revenue stream. Thank you for those comments. Yes. Okay, let's move on now to item number eight. This is an update on uh, the uh, Millbury Recreation Center restoration project. Um, do we have a uh, presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, introduce our interim public works director, Ms. Jane Cow. Sorry about that, I'm gonna start the presentation. Uh, you guys see okay? All right, so uh, Jane Cow, Public Works Department. I'm here to give a 
update on the Millbury Recreation Center project. So a quick recap, we issued the RFP for the project in April for a stipulated sum of $24.5 million. Uh, we tasked the teams to come up with, come up with approximately $3 million plus um, cost savings from the group four design. So during this process, the selection committee, um, which included staff and the subcommittee members met with each team um, confidentially multiple times to provide feedback. And then finally, uh, two months later, we received proposal from all three teams on June 19th. And then interviews were conducted uh, the week of June 22nd. The interviews included uh, presentations from each team and also allowed the selection committee to ask questions uh, regarding the proposal, getting clarifications. So all three proposals presented alteration to group four schematic design to help reduce costs while provi providing enhancements such as net zero ready building. So we had full participation from the committee, uh, selection committee. Uh, we met numerous of times going through the proposal um, and which resulted in issuing two requests for additional information uh, to the teams. And this was necessary for the selection committee to make an informed decision. So, and defy the Pope's edicts. On June 15, 1520, Pope Leo X issued a pronouncement called a. Thank you. Uh, so, the evaluation process is detailed in the request for proposal and uh, includes three parts the required elements, and that's pretty straightforward. It's um, if the proposal submitted included everything that's needed to be submitted, that's a pass failed. And then part two is the statutory required elements. Uh, these are technical expertise and life cycle costs that we looked at. And there's point system to that. And lastly is a qualitative elements. Uh, this is looking at the safety records, the design approach, uh, opportunities for innovation. What that means is the teams were really dived into what the um, proposal did in terms of revisions to group four design to reduce costs. And then lastly, qualitative uh, quality enhancement, what the proposal, um, what these teams proposed to provide enhancement uh, to the project. This was all done by consensus scoring, meaning that the group collectively decides on the scores of each of these um, items instead of each member submitting a score and taking an average. So there's a lot of discussion uh, to come up with these scores. So overall, we are very happy with the proposal that's been submitted and they really stay true to the group for design. Um, and we're very happy that we were um, we were able to receive three good proposals from three really good teams that can meet uh, mostly our supply sum and our timeline. So the evaluation process is still in progress uh, and soon to be completed. Staff will recommend uh, a team for award of the design built contract in the next two weeks, uh, which then we will also include our financing plan for the project. Uh, so we're actively working on finalizing that and that would include short-term financing, utilizing uh, our enterprise funds and investing in ourselves. In terms of schedule, it did take, a little, take us a little longer on the um, proposal review process. So we are about one week behind in terms of award of the design build contract. It was originally scheduled for July. We are now looking at the first week of August and this is really due, mainly due to the competitive, competitiveness of, you know, between the proposal and meeting uh, each uh, and requesting, excuse me, and requesting two uh, requests for information. However, uh, in terms of construction and design work starting the contract, we are still on track for a February 2022 uh, construction end date and a move in of May 22. So that concludes my presentation. Any questions?
Yes, uh, Ms. Cow, can, can you flip through to the schedule on, on your uh, slideshow? We didn't get to see it, just for the public. Is it not showing right now? Oh. No, we've only, we'd only be able to see the uh, first screen, first slide. Oh, this is weird. Sorry, it's saying- Two showing. slides later. It's saying it's paused for some reason, weird. Um, I do apologize. Let me reset the, the screen share. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can we please note to the two members of the Park and Rec were on the um, subcommittee? Yes, that's correct. There you go. Okay, there we go. So, um, yeah, so there's a, a slight delay in terms of the beginning of the schedule. But, um, we believe we can still um, keep up with the construction schedule as planned. There's, there's The construction schedule had, I think, some flexibility built into it, uh, a, bit, a little bit of a cushion. So um, we shouldn't have any issue completing construction by May, or sorry, February, 2022, uh, with the move in by May, 2022. Um, at this point, we don't see that being delayed. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Councilman Pepin, do you have any other comments? Uh, no, sir, thank you. Okay, yeah, please lower your hand, uh, just a reminder when, when you're done. Um, Vice Mayor Schneider. Vice Mayor Schneider. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, staff, for meeting me with me last week and with the uh, gentleman from uh, our construction management company that helped explain some of the, the changes going on. I have one question, given that we have taken August off, can we use tonight to set if we're gonna meet for this issue on August 11th, which would be our normal council meeting as opposed to a special council meeting next week. We already have the special council meeting for the El Rancho Anton development, I believe at seven o'clock next Tuesday. Um. We can have those those discussions. I, I would like to move this along as quickly as possible if we are able to um, select a final contractor and um, come to an agreement on the contract before by the end of this week and put on the agenda for Tuesday. Um, I, I would like to, to have it on for next week as opposed to an additional um, meeting. Also um, add it to I the special see, council I, meeting. I, I, I would recommend doing that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we could start you know, set, do it from, uh, have the, um, the rec center on from seven to 7.30 and then do the special meeting 7.30 to 9.30, something like that uh, for, for, for the um, Anton um, study session. Uh, I think time is of the essence here. <laughs> and um, We wanna make sure we select, um, you know, the proper firm correctly and that we do our due diligence, um, but I, th I think we need to, to get moving on this. I understand, but for those of us who aren't on the rec center subcommittee and therefore have less detail, you're making us make a $30 million decision in 30 minutes, as an example. It's just rushing things when it's this important and the public may have comments. Uh, that's kind of two big issues in one night. Okay. Um, maybe we could. And we've already changed to Hampton. No? Yeah. I mean, I think we're we're kind of playing this by ear right now, and we're not sure. I mean, frankly, I, I'm on the subcommittee. I don't know if this is going to be ready to go for next week, or if it may have to wait to the following week. Um, but I think once it's ready, I think we should be moving ahead on it and make sure the council is is briefed in advance of of the meeting. I don't know if there are any other thoughts on on the timing of this. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, John Baker, our yeah. project manager, is on the phone. I know that uh, we're continuing to move down a path, and and I. Yeah, Mr. Baker, do you have any comment. feedback on the on the timeline? Yeah, I, I think so. So we received just today additional clarifications from uh, one of the firms, which the subcommittee asked for, and we have analyzed. We've just started analyzing that. I do think uh, we're, we're we're looking toward putting together a a call with the subcommittee at towards the end of this week. Um, I think the subcommittee has been very thoughtful in, in their, their timing of when the full council might review the issue. 
Um, I, I do think that it would be feasible following our review later this week to uh, do a special meeting early next week. Um, we've really vetted uh, the, 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 especially the top two uh, submitters quite carefully. I do think we need to, to review that. On, uh, uh, again, we're looking to do something on Thursday. If we can do that, there would be feasible to go early next week, but I always, I always defer to the subcommittee members uh, in terms of when we might time uh, decisions or, or, or items we brought forth to council. But I think, I think it's feasible to move forward fairly quickly, frankly. Correct. Point of clarification, Mr. Baker, you meant the subcommittee would meet on Thursday, not council. Correct, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would be inclined to, you know, if, if possible, include it on um, next Tuesday at the special meeting with Anton. Um, if anything, we could extend that to 9.30 or we could cut that to an hour and a half uh, from two hours. Um, I, I don't anticipate this item taking more than about half an hour or so. Um, you know, assuming that we have a good um, consensus from the from the subcommittee this week, and, and council can be briefed in, in advance. Uh, Councilwoman Oliva? I think that's, Mayor, I, th I like your direction and I would support what you're thinking and I'd like to move it forward from here. Okay, well, let's, um, you know, I'm sure staff will be in contact with um, each of each of us over the next few days to um, firm that up before Tuesday. Um, so I, I think we can make it work. I, I, don't, I don't see what, where the issue would be. Um, so let's, I would let's plan if possible. Mayor, yes, next Tuesday, we already pushed Community Enhancement Advisory Committee out of their slot. They haven't met since uh, February or March, and they are now, I believe, meeting earlier than that. So as their liaison, I think I'm going from five o'clock on them. I mean, I'll go till midnight if that's what it takes, but this is why I don't like canceling regularly scheduled meetings and disrupting everything else. I, I think we can, we will be able to fit it in. I, I don't think there'll be a problem. Um, we are working around. Um, well, I don't like making a $30 million decision well. in 30 minutes and feel like I'm in a time strength because the subcommittee feels comfortable. I mean, okay. I appreciate meeting with Mr. Baker and Ms. Cow, but that is not the same thing as seeing everything. And it's $30 million and it's the biggest public works project the city has done in a very long time. All right. Well, let's let's take this um, conversation offline then, and um, we'll follow up and um, decide the best course of action um, going forward. But I don't think that necessarily has to be decided at this point. Okay. Um, seeing no other comments, let's move on now to um, new business item number nine. This is the adoption of resolutions uh, to form friendship city relationships with Ramallah, Palestine, and the city of Dongguan, China as well as the retiring of government friendship cities. Uh, do we have a uh, presentation or a report? Yes, thank you, Ms. Brown. I'd like to introduce our recreation director, uh, Ms. McKenzie Brady. Good evening, Mayor, members of the city council. Please let me know if the slideshow does not seem to be progressing. Um, this, is, uh, this action item includes three resolutions. The first is the adoption of a resolution to form a friendship city relationship with Ramallah, Palestine an additional resolution to form a friendship city relationship with Dongwon, China, as well as retiring dormant friendship cities that the city no longer has uh, established relationships with. As you all are uh, aware, we have formal sister city relationships with La Serena, Chile and La Samolta, and also formal friendship city relationships with Kaiping, Taishan, Shuizhou, Hanyu, and um, a number of these friendship cities, the relationships have gone dormant or they have not progressively developed. Um, Hanyu is the only uh, friendship city relationship that has remained current and has progressed over time. 
Uh, Sister Cities Commission just on July 20th last week recommended the removal of the three friendship cities that no longer serve a purpose so that Millbury is able to establish ongoing and progressive friendship city relationships with uh, cities that do have um, a special meeting and a, an essential need with, with Millbury, such as Ramallah, Palestine and Dongwon, China. So Millbury has a, a number of residents with roots in Ramallah, Palestine, who who approached the Sister Cities Commission about creating a formal French city relationship. The mayor of Ramallah uh, initially sent a letter expressing that their city council um, wanted to initiate and formalize a relationship with Milbray. So that was brought to the Sister Cities uh, Commission. Um, and a number of other cities within the United States have formal sister city and friendship city relationships, such as Boulder, Sacramento, Olympia, Washington, Madison, Wisconsin, Muscatine, Iowa. And on February 24th of this year, the Sister Cities Commission officially voted to recommend adoption of a friendship city relationship. And so um, due to the pandemic, things were put on hold. And so we are formally bringing this to you all tonight for a recommendation um, to move forward on a, an official friendship city relationship. Dongwon, China was also a, a city that was brought to the Sister Cities Commission in October of 2019. It was taken to council for consideration initially, and it was sent back to the Sister Cities Commission for an official review and recommendation. Uh, the next week, the Sister Cities Commission met and discussed uh, forming this official relationship and commission decided to move it to a future meeting. There was not an official action item taken. Uh, in November, the next Sister Cities meeting, they voted to recommend to the City Council to move forward with adopting a, uh, an official friendship city relationship. So with these conversations with the Sister Cities Commission, it was noted that there are a number of cities that, the, that Millbrae has official friendship city relationships with, but nothing has happened with these cities in uh, a number of years. And of course, the, the purpose of maintaining these relationships is to um, further relations, whether that's cultural, economic, or local governmental relations. And with these not moving forward, the Sister Cities Commission recommended on July 20th that council adopt a resolution to retire these dormant friendship relationships so that uh, the city is able to make room um, to have uh, more productive relationships with potentially Ramallah and Dongwon. And so moving forward, this is a uh, um, staff recommending that the city council consider adoption of resolutions to number one, extend an invitation to the government and people of Ramallah, Palestine to participate in the friendship city relationship. Number two, extend an invitation to the government and people, the city of Dongwon, China to participate in the friendship city relationship. And also number three, to retire the dormant friendship city relationships that are no longer serving um, an official purpose or progressive um, relationship with the city of Millbrae. And that is the presentation. Do you all have any questions? Thank you very much uh, for the presentation, Ms. Brady. Um, any questions from the council? Oh, Councilman Lee? Uh, let's hear what the, um, let's hear what the, uh, um, the, um, the citizens want to say first and then make comments. Okay, we can go to uh, public comment on this item first. Um, let's start with uh, Jean Wong. Good evening, Mayor Holliber and council members. My name is Jean Wong, a resident of the Ray for over 22 years. I'd like to voice my objection to the proposal to establish a, a friendship city relationship with the city of Dunguang, China. To date, nobody has already established relationships with three other Chinese cities, and it appears that these relationships have not been successful. There really is uh, no justification to pursue a fourth one, uh, other than that I think personally to satisfy uh, certain individuals' ag agendas. So of all the cities in the world to consider for a friendship city relationship, why select one with such a nefarious reputation? Throughout China, Dunguang is known as the Eastern Amsterdam, not because of its tourist attractions, but for its sex trade even though prostitution, prostitution is illegal in China. So while the Chinese government has tried to clean this up several years ago, by all accounts, the sex trade is again thriving. 
So Dungong has very little in common with Millbrae, in my opinion. Um, for further consideration, any further consideration to uh, um, establish a relationship with Gundong should be put on hold. Instead, I suggest that council members should challenge the sister cities commission to recommend another city that better aligns with the culture and spirit of Millbrae. So thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wong. And if uh, our staff can also please put up the timer for public comments, um, put that back up, three minute timer. Okay, uh, next speaker is uh, Yo-Yo Shui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, yeah, I'd like to echo the comments of uh, Ms. Wong. Um, I just want to better understand the um, criteria used to select various sister cities uh, or friendship cities, that is. Um, I'd like to understand um, how they are chosen. Um, if, we are, um, if we are seeking some sort of similarity in terms of population size or perhaps uh, how the city is situated, um, or if we're trying to um, develop some sort of long-term relationship with them, I just would hate to see so much effort being put into establishing a friendship city, another friendship city in China, just to have it being retired years later um, with no significant progress. Um, and I think um, as much as we need the uh, cultural exchange right now and dialogue um, in a period of great anti-Chinese racism and fear, I think we also have to be at the same time um, sensitive to the fact that um, there are currently legitimate concerns regarding relationships with the Chinese government, specifically the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, this has nothing to do with the Chinese people, but rather the people who run the government, including cities and including people who run the government of Dongguan, China. Um, I would like to um, see the city stand in solidarity with those in Hong Kong, those being oppressed. And I think we should very much tread carefully before engaging in yet another um, friendship city relationship with any city in China, not just Dongguan in particular. Um, I uh, strongly support the friendship city with um, Ramallah, Palestine. Um, I was there two years ago. It's a very beautiful city, very culturally diverse. Um, our population size is um, very similar. And I think we actually stand a lot to learn from forming a friendship city with a new country that we have not yet um, formed a relationship with before. Um, and I'd like to just hear a little bit more from um, the commission, um, including from Mackenzie about um, what kind of activities we can see, what the timeline is sort of like, and um, how we can really keep our relationships engaged so that they don't become retired, so that we can protect the time and effort investment that we're putting into these relationships. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shui. Uh, the next comment is from uh, Michael Alaraj. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'd like to uh, consider the adoption of the Ramola uh, sister city to be a huge addition to the city of Millbrae. Uh, and the Ramola community uh, throughout the Bay Area, not just in Millbrae, is willing to participate and help and work together with the city of Millbrae as much as we can uh, in order to you know, go from just a friendship to a sister city in the future. So we are ready and uh, we hope that the, the board, uh, the, the city council will uh, vote on this and, and we are ready to, to start making a, a progr uh, progressive impact on the city of Millbrae. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alaraj. Okay. Um, seeing no other public comments, uh, we'll go back to the council. Uh, Councilman Lee, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, um, first of all, I'd just like to thank uh, the citizens of Mala and the citizens of Millbrae who, who, uh, who have association people with Mala. Um, uh, when I was mayor, it was, uh, it was proposed to have the uh, friendship, a sister city. They, they actually jumped on it very quickly. The council of Mala, they actually, um, the next day after we said we're interested, and a couple of days later, they, sent, they, they voted to, um, to create a, a relationship with Millbrae. So we should be very honored. Um, and uh, we thank you for uh, everybody who worked on this to, uh, to, get, it to, to get it here. 
Um, and also I thank sister cities for being very conscious about uh, and embedding uh, and, and a lot of these uh, um, cities. I'm gonna ask that, um, I'm gonna ask that uh, the super, uh, recreation superintendent, uh, Mackenzie Brady, can you explain to people how do these sister cities uh, come to, how do they come to, or friendship cities come to uh, proposal to the city and then I'll make, I'll make further comments. So Mayor, members of the city council, this is McKinney Brady, recreation director. Um, historically, uh, new friendship cities or sister cities are formed from individuals within the community uh, going to the sister cities commission, uh, potentially presenting number of individuals who um, are bringing forth their opinion and and have discussions with the sister cities commission. Um, whether that be as you as you mentioned, um, like minded city, similar size, um, similar residents, activities, industry, um, anything of that nature. So it is, uh, from what I understand, brought forth from members of the community. Can I make a comment on that as well? Uh, as the council liaison, and I attended these meetings of the Sister City Commission. Um, so I think both of, one of the reasons why both of these cities were recommended as friendship cities is that there were um, connections with Millbrae um, and also active groups from those cities um, that are represented in the area. Um, so for example, from Dongguan, there was a Dongguan um, Trade Business Association that has um, ties in the Bay Area um, and they can help to facilitate um, relationships with Dongguan. Um, so to hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls that have occurred with the other friendship cities where you know we established a friendship city and there was no, never any follow-up and then it becomes dormant. Um, with Ramallah, there's also a group with uh, many residents in Millbrae and throughout the area, um, and they host annual events um, in San Francisco, I think, and uh, Foster City as well. Um, and th they would like to bring some of those events into Millbrae um, and connect with the um, Palestinian community in Millbrae. So I think that's how these two cities were, were recommended um, as friendship cities um, by, by the commission. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, we don't uh, we don't go in into any relationships unless there is strong community support for these uh, relationships. Because the city does not does not fund these activities, the city's just support in terms of showing up to events and uh, helping them, helping people uh, uh, get um, meeting the council and members. But we don't fund any of these events, um, so it has to be citizen driven. Uh, so, uh, in that respect, Dongguan and a lot of these other cities, uh, they have uh, a presence. And I think one, th one, I would recommend we keep Toys on. Um, the reason is because most of the people in San Francisco and here are from Toys on, and uh, most of the railroad workers were from Toys on. Um, and just out of disclosure, my father, my family is from Toys on, and they do come and visit, and maybe they. Maybe they didn't make the uh, official visit with the sister cities, but I have met with several uh, representatives several times from So there is there is some connection to that city, uh, and I highly recommend we keep uh, Toys on. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Um, Councilwoman Pappen. Um, I'm a I have no problem with Ramallah. Um, the statement that was made by one of the speakers is concerning. Um, on the one, uh, Mr. Mayor, you've been an active participant in all of this though. Um, and I appreciate the connections with Millbrae, but I'm, I am concerned. Um, I, I will um, support uh, council member Lee though on retaining uh, the one city, particularly giving his family ties. Uh, but I do have concerns about um, the one. So um, if you can relieve my concerns, Mr. Mayor, I, I would appreciate it. But that, that was a pretty big allegation dropped by the speaker. Let me, uh, let me uh, clarify. I, I was at Dongguan three times already. Um, I can't talk about some of those accusations, but I mean, I, don't, I think right now China and uh, US relationships are not good right now. Uh, but I can tell you that China does, wants to trade in business with uh, America. China is uh, 
is number one trading partner with California. Um, and uh, when when this all, whole things the tariff started hit got hit, all of our uh, trade got uh, lost six percent of uh, revenues. So um, China is a big is a big part of our ec economy. Uh, I can't speak to some of the accusations, but I've been there four, three times. It's a very first class city. Uh, they're no, they have a huge business park that uh, could be rival to Silicon Valley. They're one of the uh, fastest and um, most economically uh, large economic zones in China. So the third one um, and next is uh, Shenzhen is number one, which is uh, right across, this, uh, across the border from Hong Kong. Um, and Dongguan is in the same area in the same bay, um, the same bay area. Um, they have several, several high tech area. I'm really surprised that they're even interested in Milbury because they can get the pick of whoever they want um, in the world to uh, be part of friendship. And I think that there's a lot of hesitation because of the uh, relationships with China right now. And, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to uh, say that everything in China is perfect or they're even you know, doing the right thing, um, but it's all about business and, bis and I tell you, wars is not good for business. So I think that they, uh, they have their, the Dongguan Enterprise Zone is actually, their office is in Burlingame, right across the border from Milray. Uh, so, and they have a lot of uh, supporters here. And uh, so I, that's why, I think that's why uh, the, the uh, Friendship City and the city has agreed to uh, go in friendship with them. I think that there are some people here, I, I, I sense that there's some uh, hesitation because of personal issues. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, that's what I heard just now. So um, I, I would like to try to keep it as objective as possible. And I, I don't, I, I don't have any problems with uh, having a friendship city with Dongguan, uh, because I think it's, it is a world class city, and I don't think that uh, uh, there'd be an issue unless we have an issue with having a friendship city with China, any fr a friendship city with China. That's the only reason why I would think that we would not do it. Uh, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. If, if you just wanted my, my input, um, I think that was one of the reasons why Dongguan was. Um, considered attractive is that it is sort of a high tech center in China. Um, they have a number of businesses with uh, connections in this area. As Wayne mentioned, their um, business association is right over in Burlingame. Um, they have a number of events in the Bay Area. And, and, they, and I think that's what the commission was attracted to was um, having a real connection and a, another group that can help facilitate um, the relationship more than just having you know, one commissioner that has a cousin over there or something like that. Um, that they seem to have uh, roots here in this area. Um, I, I would agree with Councilman Lee's comments that I think, you know, if the, obviously there are uh, concerns with many issues in China, um, and especially you know, human rights abuses, um, some of the, the issues in uh, Hong Kong. But I think if we're going to have any friendship city in, in China, and, we, and I think that is important with the large uh, Chinese American population in Milbrae. Um, I don't see why not Dongguan as opposed to uh, other other cities in China. And I think part of also what the, um, I'll respectfully disagree with Councilman Lee on, on the Toishan and, and your um, ancestry is from there. Um, I think one of the other things that the I heard many times from the commission is that they value uh, quality relationships over quantity. Um, we're not just trying to come, you know, add to a list of friendship cities in China. I think we want a city that eventually could develop into a sister city relationship. And that's something that the commission saw in Dongguan that they do not currently see in any of the three other cities that have had very little communication with, with the city of Milbrae uh, since becoming friendship cities. Um. Mr. Mayor, to follow up there, yes. I, I do recognize the um, what's been stated here as to strong local relationships and um, supporting our local population, I believe is very important at this point in time. I'd say the timing of all of this is going to be sensitive to some, but I do believe we need to be supportive of our local community and the people within um, distinctively within our community uh, are very important. So um, based on your assurances, willing to go ahead. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilman Pappen. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Hi, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> oh, God. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Having been on two friendship and or sister city trips, I think the critical part in establishing a relationship is how many local people we have in town who will maintain that relationship. It's not just the commissioners on sister sister city. So it's my understanding, and I can see Ed Musa on the call and, and Maggie, and that we have many Millbury residents with still strong family ties with Ramallah. I think that makes that a very easy and a really lovely one. Plus the fact that um, they're similar to us in population. They may not be on the on the water like we are or things like that, but I see a lot of similarities. I'm trying to remember from previous discussions with Dongguan, it's a very, very large city, isn't it? Yes, I think isn't it's, it, uh, it's, it's uh, about 10 million people. It's in, it's in the millions, yeah, about 7 million. A small city in China million. is 3 million people, so. <laughs> so, yeah, well, and see, and that might be the difference, Councilman Lee, on that. Um, when I went on the Friendship City trip to Hanyu last November with um, with many members of the Sister City Commission, we also met Hanyu Sister City Bagua, and it was interesting meeting the, the people from the Philippines too, many of whom had served in the American military and then went back home. And the strong relationship Han Yu has with Bagua, every time Bagua suffered a national disaster, Han Yu has been there for them. So if we are going to be talking about uh, recognizing what, um, um, I'm trying to find my notes here, the comment about prostitution, maybe this is where we can work together on something like that. And, you know, that friendship cities are more than trade. To me, I see them more as how we're trying to establish exchange programs with the schools in Hanyu, how in most of when we went there, you know, family members there invited us in. It, it was there, the president invited us to work with them on coastal pollution issues because we share coastlines. I would like to see our relationships be beyond trade, but uh, I will go along with both of the recommendations as well as keeping the additional city. But uh, truly in the, the guidelines of sister city and friendship, you're not supposed to have multiple friendship cities in one country. You're supposed to really kind of concentrate on it. So for all of our, our residents who wanna work on the two cities in China, get to work. Maybe the Sister City Commission can help them identify activities that can help create that cultural bond and that can be reported back to us as council. And then I would only throw one more thing in. San Carlos is currently looking at a sister city or friendship city relationship with an American community that is largely a community of color most likely a community of low income so that there can again be a cultural exchange, but also possibly a financial exchange on that. And I think that our growing community working on Black Lives Matter is also looking at a possibility. And, and I, just so that Sister City knows, I like that idea. I like that idea of finding a city similar to us in size somewhere in the South where we can uh, grow with each other. Um, Ms. Um, Vice Mayor, I think those are really good comments. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to, um, if there's no other comments from other council members, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, Dongguan, Ramala, and, uh, and keep Toysan and then remove the other cities. I would like to second that motion, council member Lee. Thank you. Okay, um, can we have a roll call vote please? Council member Lee. Aye. Council member Pappen. Aye. Council member Oliva. Aye. Vice Mayor Snyder. Aye. Mayor Holliber. Aye. The adoption of three resolution with the following action. One, formation of friendship city with relationship with Mala, Palestine, uh, Ramallah, Palestine, excuse me. Number two, formation of friendship city with Dongbun, China and retirement of dormant cities with Kaiping and Suzhou, China. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. As passed unanimously. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item 10. This is a resolution uh, authorizing the city manager or designee to execute a lease agreement with Millbrae Montessori School. 
uh, for facilities at the future Millbury Recreation Center uh, for the purpose of providing licensed preschool and early childhood recreation services. Hello Thank again, you, Mayor. And You'd like to introduce oh. McKinsey Brady. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, thank you. Uh, hello again, Mayor, members of the City Council. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so this this uh, action item is for the City Manager to be able to uh, execute a lease agreement, as you said, Millbury Montessori School, for the purpose of providing licensed preschool and early childhood recreation services. When the fire happened, the Millbury Community Center uh, outreach was done after the fact with Group Four, and through that entire outreach process. Uh, it was determined that the city needed to have a an established actual licensed preschool space. So currently, the Millbury Recreation Department is not a licensed child care provider. And the way our early childhood recreation services are offered is it's a, our three-year-olds are on Tuesdays and Thursdays and four-year-olds are on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's how it's been in the past. And it's only for three hours a day. So a licensed child care provider would be offering uh, services all day long, every day, Monday through Friday. So anywhere in the range of a 7 a.m. to a 6 p.m. Uh, so that was determined that, that the city of Millbrae needed that within the new recreation facility. So the conceptual design and the schematic design um, included uh, indoor and outdoor preschool space. As you can see, this is uh, Group 4's final schematic design um, of what would be the preschool space. The new um, design build entity uh, will probably have this modified very slightly, but, but not very much. But the, the preschool space includes approximately 2,400 square feet of indoor space. And it's two preschool classrooms for up to 48 youth total. It's about 900 square feet for each of the preschool um, classroom spaces. There's a shared restroom with child height fixtures, which is um, very important. A shared food prep and storage area, an office, um, isolation rest area, and a staff yeah. restroom as well. And both of the preschool classrooms would have access to the outdoor play yard, secure play yard with a fence, uh, which is a, an additional 2,500 square feet. And, and just going back to this, um, the preschool space would be able to operate independently of the recreation center. So there would be its own access. Um, staff would not have to um, be there on site in the morning to open up the space for the preschool operator or to close it. So it would be able to operate independently. Let's come back to the timeline. In January of 2019, city council approved um, the, the request or the City Council um, approved the action item to issue a request for statements of interest. Um, and that went out in February of 2019. And we received statements of interest um, by the deadline of April 5th. Uh, summer and fall of 2019, staff and um, project manager did interviews with two potential operators and continued to have conversations with a potential chosen operator in fall, this last fall, fall of 2019. Um, after staff had final discussions with this potential operator, uh, terms were discussed, agreement was drafted with the city attorney, and um, as we had a pandemic, this is being pushed off a little bit longer, but here we are with a staff recommendation to council to adopt the resolution to authorize um, city manager to execute this lease agreement. Um, if this is approved tonight, the selected operator will help to determine any final needs for facility design, potentially casework, um, where cabinetry might be, um, any, any final needs. Um, and we anticipate substantial completion of the recreation center preschool, or of the substantial completion of the recreation center um, no later than April 22, as uh, um, Jane Cow mentioned earlier, we we're looking at a February 22. This is the, the final um, date for that with a preschool operator uh, move-in of furniture and equipment and then an anticipated preschool opening date of May 22. So um, the lease terms are um, put together, or the, the terms of this agreement is put together as a lease payment um, in the, the range of about a $12,000 a month payment plus the cost of utilities. And this was determined based on um, what the recreation center financing package would need to be. And we estimated it to be at about $5.02 a square foot per month or $60.26 a square foot per year. And that's equivalent to 
current market rate for similar facilities. And this would also sufficiently cover the debt service for any um, loan that would be needed to cover this portion of the facility. Um, the amount would increase with the CPI up to 3% annually. And over the course of 10 years for the financing package, this would result in approximately $1.4 million in 2020 dollars. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, the 10 years, it's a term of 10 years plus options to renew for five years. And I mentioned before the 48 youth maximum, ages three to six. And that could be, that wouldn't necessarily be 48 youth full time. It could be uh, 30 full time and then another potentially 36 part time. And so it would be, if you, if you look at it like a full time equivalency, it'd be 48 youth uh, full time. And the preschool operator would uh, offer subsidized enrollment fee for participants who qualify as very low or extremely low income. And there would be priority registration for Millbury residents and city employees. And a resident is defined as um, an individual who uh, lives, works in, or goes to school in Millbury for the purposes of our fees. And as a, a capital contribution to the project, the uh, preschool operator would um, provide and finance, um, provide and or finance playground equipment plus safety surfacing. So right now, the way that the facility would be provided is a concrete slab. So they would be providing um, in the outdoor play yard. So they'd be providing that equipment and safety surfacing. And um, another term within this agreement is that the operator must offer employment to the city's current early childhood recreation staff person. So we do not want our, um, preschool staff person to uh, potentially lose out um, on their position or if we were to move forward with this operator. And just moving forward, uh, staff recommends that the city council adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager or designee to ex execute a lease agreement with Millbury Montessori School, whereby Millbury Montessori would lease facilities at the new Millbury Recreation Center for the purpose of providing licensed preschool and early childhood recreation services to the residents of to the city of Millbrae in a form approved by the city attorney. And do you have any questions? And the um, uh, Millbrae Montessori School operator, um, Nicole Perry, I believe that she is also on the call if you had any questions for her as well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Brady. Uh, start with uh, Councilman Pepin. Thank you very much for the staff report. Um, I do want to emphasize uh, the great importance and the huge demand for childcare in our region. And uh, I am aware that the Millbrae Montessori School uh, has a very good reputation and I'm glad that we can uh, partner here. Uh, so I would highly recommend this and I'm so glad to see uh, that the this is coming to resolution once and for all. I know this council as a whole has been very supportive of this and uh, really look forward to this being a part of Millbrae's future. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move approval. Thank you very much, uh, Councilwoman Pappen. Uh, let's see, uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Hi, thank you. A couple of quick questions and then a comment on the contract. Um, is this the same program that's running out of Glen Oak School? Yes, Vice Mayor Schneider, it is. It is. Would they be giving up their space at Glen Oaks? I am not completely certain, but I do believe that they would be. Okay. Um, and then just, do they happen to have their own buses? And I ask because there's some company in Millbrae that used to park their buses in the rec center parking lot, both close to where the building used to be and then on the slanty portion that abuts Ashton. So would we be wanting to make space for these buses if they have them? I am not aware of, uh buses. And, and Nicole, if you're on the call, are you able to potentially answer that question? Oh, hi, Mackenzie. Um, my name is Nicole Perry with Millbury Montessori School. Um, no, we don't have any buses or vans. We don't transport any of the children. They, they're okay. dropped off at our school and they're picked up at our school. But um, we, used, we used to do field trips, but um, we did that with parent participation, carpooling. Okay. 
Excellent. Thank you. And then Thank could you. you, are you going to give up your space at Glen Oaks? I know that that school gate keeps talking about, will they remodel it? Will they reopen it? So I know that you're in a somewhat risky position there. Right. Yeah, we've been there for um, my mom, Carla Perry. She opened the school in 1981. So we've been there for 39 years. Wow. And, and it, yes, it hasn't been remodeled <laughs> since. Um, but we you know I can't, I'm not 100% sure what, what we're going to do. But we want to focus, of course, most of our attention at the Millbury Rec Center, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. At this well, time, like at this time. Will, Thank you. Uh, there is a great demand, and one of the long term actions for, the, for COVID is to try to find additional childcare on that. So that's why I asked if there would be, even though we're two years away from a rec center, um, growing our capacity. The county also has talked about, and one of our principals contacted me to sign on to uh, using $2 million of the county's funds for child care. Have we been able to loop you into that? Or has no. the city been able to consider that $2 million? I, or I haven't. Is it the, okay. So there is just a great deed. And here's my last thing. When I scan through the contract, um, I'm just curious if our, the employees who will now be working in a city facility will have background checks and, um, you know, everything to make sure that I, I know there's a gross negligence and willful misconduct clause. I saw that, but I didn't know, see anything about background checks, child abru abuse protections and things like that. Vice Mayor, um, this is... Oh, I'm sorry, Mackenzie. I, I think I, I that's was required just, in the licensing. Uh, it is. The licensing I'll, requirements. I'll, okay, very all, good. All, all teachers have to do a life scan, fingerprint, CPR training, and we actually have, they started a new um, uh, mandate for, sex, for abuse, for child abuse, mandate that we have to do a class every two years to renew it. Excellent. You sound fantastic. I am happy to support this. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's our pleasure. We look forward to it as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Councilman Lee. Yes. Um, I'd like to second the mo uh, Councilwoman uh, Pappin's uh, motion. And also, um, uh, Ms. Brady, can you explain to us again the uh, safety measures of keeping the kids, uh, the children um, safe and the, ch the child protection uh, measures in terms of the building design? Yes, yeah, so there would be a, a secured play yard and um, it would not be able to be um, opened from child height from the inside and, and I believe the same for the, the doors on the inside as well. Um, is that what you're asking about specifically? Yes, I just want to make sure that uh, the, the public knows that there's some there's safety features to protect the uh, young kids from Yes, there would be all, so all safety features would be implemented and also for a licensed facility, there would be inspections and um, all of that would be taken into account. Yeah, and um, I really appreciate uh, Montessori for stepping up um, for this program because uh, the, um, the uh, preschools is critical and the county is making a priority as well. Uh, they've given millions of dollars for preschool because a lot of central service people uh, don't have access to uh, childcare. So uh, we really appreciate this, uh, um, this opportunity to partnership with you. Um, and so we, we wish you the best. And uh, if we could uh, bring, bring more motivated programs and try to provide more space for preschool, I think we ought to try to do that. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And yes, I, I think I would like to um, echo those comments. Actually, my, my brother went to Millbury Montessori School many uh, centuries ago. Um, and uh, as I remember, it was a great program um, to be able to go through. Um, but yeah, we, we do have a great need for um, preschool in this community. So I think in part of um, when we were planning the rec center, I think we envisioned that as an expansion of preschool facilities in the Ray rather than just a relocation. So um, I hope we can work with you to see if maybe you can either hold on to the Glen Oaks facility as well, because I know the demand is certainly there. Um, if not, maybe the city can work with the school district to try to uh, help bring in another um, provider at that location. Um, and Mayor? Uh, yes. I'm sorry uh, if I could sure. interrupt. Yesterday I was reading the county's long-term COVID management plan and the back 
the back appendices talk about a range of funding mechanisms. And there is some funding mechanism, I believe, within the CARE Act for converting uh, commercial properties in downtown into child care centers. I'm not saying that Millbrae Montessori unless they want to, but that's another option for us in Millbrae is to look at some of our vacant space down there and create more child care facility of whatever ever type. And it seems to be that there's some funding that we might be able to get. I don't know if that's recreation's job to look at that, but it's right there and there could be funding for it. Yes, thank you. I think we need to um, our staff needs to continue for any and, and every uh, funding opportunity as uh, we still have a large uh, capital expenditure for the, for the rec center and any um, grants or funding that uh, perhaps could be dedicated to the um, preschool portion of the facility um, can help to bring down that overall uh, burden on the city. Okay, so we have a motion, I believe, from uh, Councilwoman Papin, and I believe the second think, was from Councilwoman, Councilwoman Lee. Yeah, I had my. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I saw your hand. I, okay. Um, yes, I have, I have Councilwoman Oliva. Yes, I have a com I have a question for uh, Nicole Perry. Nicole, will this in will this grow the business, or is like what are, what do you provide? How many how many children are you providing for now? Um. Right. Right, yeah. hello. Right, right now at our facility, I mean, in March we had 58 students. Um, that's we're licensed for 60 because we have three classrooms and we had 58 students. Um, you know, with the COVID, it hit everybody hard. We we reopened in June, but we've gone from 58 students in March, and I'm down to 10. Oh, so, uh, I'm yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> it's that it's is been a little rough. <laughs> So I'm hoping that, you know, we'll build it back up. In the fall, we're, in the September, we're looking around uh, a little under 30 students, hopefully, if, you know, but things always change and people change their minds. And, you know, we're very, of course, we understand all the situations, but, you know, everything's changing. So hopefully by the time this is all, the rec center's ready, we're back to a little bit of normalcy. So, so I guess my question was um, kind of, looking to see if this was going to enhance the Millbrae Montessori, but it looks like it's going to take about 10 spaces away. So we, we have to encourage you to stay where you're at as, as well as growing to another location. Yeah, um, I, I would hope it would enhance and um, I would hope it would just extend like it'd be another extension. So that would be the okay. ideal goal. That, that's you. the ideal goal. And Nicole, and just... You know, just an FYI, my son, my son went through your program too, like 25 years ago. Oh, wow. Probably had my mom. <laughs> well, I think I've been there for over 20 years, but yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. So yeah, we've been here for a while and we have wonderful families and wonderful community. And we always feel like we're a family up there. So um, we're very excited and it would be wonderful, ideally, like I said, if it could just be an extension of, of you know, the next step. Yeah, we... That's that would be my goal too. Thank you. Yeah, that, that would be a great um, asset and a great improvement for the community. Thank you very much. Thank be you. An extension of the existing location. Okay, thank you very much, and we look forward to working with you, Ms. Perry. Okay, um, let's have a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Lee. Aye. Councilmember Papin. Aye. Councilmember Aliba. Aye. Vice Mayor Snyder. Aye. Mayor Palaber. Aye. The resolution authorizing the city manager or destiny to execute a lease agreement with Millbrae Monastery, Monastery School for facilities for facilities at the future Millbrae Recreation Center for the purpose of providing licensed preschool and early childhood recreation service passed unanimously. Great, thank you. All right, next on our agenda is item 11. This is the uh, motion to adopt a resolution approving the precise alignment plan for California Drive from El Camino Real to Irwin Place in compliance with the approved Millbrae Station Area Specific Plan. Um, do we have a uh, presentation? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. I'd like to introduce uh, Burroughs. Harry Burroughs, our project manager uh, in the Station Area Specific Plan area. Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Um, City Attorney here. I'm yes, Mr. Conrad. Yes, yes uh, since this involves a, a property owned by another client of our firm. I'm going to recuse myself and exit the meeting at this point. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Conrad.
And we have, I believe, um, Ed Lowe present from our uh, outside counsel's office, uh, the Jarvis firm. That is correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bros. Okay, um, good evening, Mayor Holliber and Vice Mayor Schneider and members of the city council. Item before you tonight is the approval of a precise alignment plan for California Drive from El Camino Real to Irwin Place consistent with the Millbrae Station area specific plan. The purpose of adopting the precise alignment is to provide more certainty and clarity specifically to the station access and transit serving elements as shown conceptually in both the original 1998 and the amended 2016 Millbrae Station area specific plan. California Drive, as I think everyone is aware, is a vital transportation element in the specific plan on the west side of the station. The northern portion of the alignment was defined by the approval of the Sara Station or the TOD number one project. The action tonight um, will define the entire length of California south of that to Irwin Place. City staff believes that this alignment and the transit serving elements included are fully consistent with both the 1998 and 2016 specific plans. This exhibit illustrates the northern portion of the alignment, which is shown in yellow, that was um, approved with the Sarah Station project that I just mentioned. And then the southern portion in green, comprising the remaining alignment south to Irwin Place. So this is an illustration showing the precise alignment of the entire length of California Drive, again, from El Camino um, to the east, and then south all the way down to Irwin Place. A particular note are the access and transit serving facilities. So these include both the bus staging areas in yellow, which are shown here more to the right, van and shuttle drop off and pickup areas that are shown in blue here and here, as well as um, auto and bus drop off and pickup areas that are shown in green here in the central portion. This alignment also preserves the size and function of the kiss and ride area, which is here as well as reconfigured parking in this area. For reference, this is the west side circulation plan from the 1998 station area specific plan showing the transit serving uses and incorporation of the kiss and ride area into these elements. So you can see the bus um, drop off auto areas here, bus staging here, and this is the van shuttle and drop off areas that are um, currently encompassed by the kiss and ride area. This next slide is a California drive as shown in the 2016 Millbrae area specific plan with the north and southbound shuttle and bus stop shown as well as the kiss and ride areas. And again, I'll point them out here. If you can see my cursor in these locations are the shuttle stops and bus stops. And here is the preservation of the existing um, kiss and ride area. So I think it's worth noting that the 2001 kiss and ride agreement between BART in the city is important as it requires BART to deed and or relinquish rights to certain properties back to the city upon the approval of development on the west side of the station. The approval of the Millbrae um, Sarah Station project, TOD number one, triggered this requirement. And as indicated on the previous slide of the entire precise alignment, th this, this alignment provides specific transit serving features that are listed here in detail on these bullet points. Um, I won't um, go into them or reread them for you, and they're in your staff report um, um, if you want to um, reference that for greater detail. The adoption of the precise alignment will provide certainty to both BART as well as the other trans transit agencies that these transit serving and access elements consistent with the specific plan will be provided and incorporated into the final improvements when constructed in the future. So with that, I'm going to conclude this brief presentation and turn it over to Tom Williams um, for any additional comments or, or clarity that I may have um, missed, as well as to open up for questions for the City Council. Yes, thank you, Harry. Uh, Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, we would just open it up for discussion and comments and, and be able to respond to any questions that you have. Can we hear from the public? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Williams. Oh. Uh, uh, would you rather hear from the public first before the council? Yeah. Yes, sure. please. Okay. Any members from the public that would like to speak on this item? Okay. Let's start with uh, Courtney Davis.
Ms. Davis, if you'd like to speak. Hi, sorry about that. Um, sorry, uh, Mr. May, if we, if we may, if sorry to interrupt, but Harry, can you stop the uh, share screen and we can put the timer? There we go. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Courtney Davis, um, a senior project manager with Saris Regis. Thanks for the opportunity to comment. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Calvano uh, Saris Regis team. Earlier today, my colleague Eli Corey submitted comments by email on this item. Um, tonight, I'd like to iterate, reiterate the primary points in those comments. Uh, to be clear, our comments are based on our information and belief since the alignment was only released on Friday. We've had limited uh, time to review and independently ver verify. So we stand ready to be corrected on any factual statements that are inaccurate. For reasons I will outline, we respectfully request that you delay tonight's vote to adopt the proposed precise alignment plan for California Drive to avoid moving too quickly with the decision that we believe may be counterproductive to the goal of supporting the highest and best development of the west side of the Millbury Station. We request that the City Council instead consider this resolution at the next regularly scheduled meeting on August 11th. The proposed California Drive alignment has several technical elements for prevent, present impediments to the achievement of future build out of the station. We would appreciate the opportunity to more carefully review and comment on those elements before any formal decision is made to adopt an alignment. The reasons we believe a delay in adopting the alignment are, is, is warranted are, number one, portions of the proposed California Drive alignment appear to be located on or encroaching near land owned by the Joint Powers Authority and on a fourth BART parcel. Both parcels are southeast of Millbrae Avenue and the BART parcel is not part of the Kiss and Ride Agreement. These parcels do not appear to be included in figure 7-6 of the MSASP and therefore the proposed alignment does not technically conform with the MSASP. The resolution does not identify a path or process by which the city will obtain rights to these parcels. Second, the proposed alignment does not appear to comply with paragraph five or exhibit one of the Kiss and Ride Agreement. Third, the perpendicular auto parking added to California Drive impedes the city's only Northern access point to the west side of the station and notably impairs the redevelopment of the city's Kiss and Ride parcel. Fourth, the proposed California Drive alignment diminishes the forthcoming planned RFP process by artificially and necessarily limiting the city's access to future development scenarios on the land immediately west of California Drive. Fifth, if the proposed alignment is meant to facilitate return of the BART parcels, then the city should receive assurances in writing from BART before council adopts a definitive alignment. The California Drive alignment seems to be an action that has come on suddenly and one that if not thoroughly vetted and adjusted as necessary, could diminish the station's future optimal development. We recognize that the city seeks to move quickly to secure the return of the BART par parcels, an action we fully support, but we are concerned that substantial questions around the alignment should be addressed to make sure moving quickly now doesn't create future delays or other future impairments. Adoption of the alignment should be preceded by a thorough evaluation of the relevant technical elements in light of the city's goals for the west side of the station. We respectfully request that the council display this decision until these technical elements can be evaluated in greater detail with the appropriate group to ensure these and other aspects are adequately considered before a California drive alignment is approved. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Davis. Okay, uh, the next speaker is Nathan Chan. Mr. Chan? It's the unmute issue. Mr. Chan, I think you're muted. Hello, is that better? Yes, yeah. thank you. All right, yeah, uh, thanks again for the opportunity to speak. Um, I sent an email to the city council earlier today with some comments. I, I apologize if I, uh, uh, don't speak as articulately since I apparently I guess I lost that email when I sent it to you. Um, but I do have a lot of concerns about uh, this uh, plan, very similar to the uh, comments made by Courtney earlier. Um, I noticed in the uh, staff material ahead of time, it did sort of seem like the city was proceeding with the specific plan uh, decision to proceed with in a manner consistent with the previous specific plan uh, conflicts with uh, what high-speed rail uh, was planning. And I certainly am not uh, saying that high-speed rail here is in the right. I was at the meeting 
last July, where I, I was just as shocked as all of you when they sort of showed this parking lot uh, being proposed. But I would like to know, um, has the city proposed, cleared this plan with the intermodal working group that uh, the city, the transit agencies and high-speed rail are all a part of? Have, has the city received a response from high-speed rail when they uh, submitted a comment for the business plan? I'm concerned that um, I, I understand that there's no, no love lost between Millbrae and the transit agencies, but it does seem a shame to me that they're, the city and high-speed rail have adopted a confrontational attitude towards each other. And I'm very concerned that uh, what will result is something that we all don't want. Um, it feels to me like a disinterested third party is really needed in this scenario. I'd be very curious to know if, I know, to, I know that the letter was CC'd to our state and federal reps. I've tried reaching out to them about what they think of this proposal. Um, they haven't really said anything. So I'm concerned that uh, the city is proceeding in a matter that may not have the support of uh, state legislators or uh, federal representatives. And yeah, I just don't, I, I don't want the city to do something that uh, is embarrassing or that would uh, result in egg on our faces. I think we all want uh, this uh, station area to succeed, to be a, a great example of transit oriented development and sort of playing a game of chicken with high speed rail doesn't seem like the best way to proceed. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chan. Um, maybe we could have, um, I don't see any other public comments, so um, maybe either uh, Mr. Burroughs or Mr. Williams um, respond to some of these comments. I just wanna say, you know, for the record there, we're not changing a thing with this map. This is totally consistent with the 2016 um, MSASP that was adopted by the city council that all of the transit agencies are well aware of. Um, this is, it's consistent with this plan and it's, um, yeah, it, it should not be a surprise to anyone. Um, Mr. Williams or Mr. Burroughs, would, would you like to uh, comment on this? And, and I think we also have the, um, I believe the engineer that presented, that uh, developed this map is also uh, available this evening. Mr. Williams? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of the city council, Tom Williams, city manager. I think that, uh, you know, the comments that, that this is new and, and that people haven't had enough time. This has been adopted. This alignment has been adopted in the specific plan there, as you mentioned, since 1998. Um, it's really the only constant uh, that has been adopted in the Millbrae Stationary Specific Plan. And uh, it maintained its integrity with the adoption uh, and amendment in the 2016 plan. I would like to share just for background information that people may not be aware of. But in 2008, the city received a letter from Mr. Mike Scanlon, who is the general manager and chief executive officer uh, for uh, Sam Trans, Caltrain, and it states, please be assured, th this is to the city of Millbury, please be assured that Sam Trans intends to honor its contractual commitments and will take the necessary actions at the appropriate time to transfer its property interest in the Kiss and Ride lot and portion of the Railroad Avenue parcel. So this is confirmation from 2008 from Santran's chief executive officer uh, on the alignment, precise alignment that, that is before the council this evening. Also during the 2016 plan amendment and environmental document, we received from BART's planning director, this comment in quotes, BART concurs with the circulation and parking policies included in the specific plan update. So that's confirmation that at the time that both now BART and Santran's have concurred with the city. There's also comment number three from BART uh, that indicates that BART's access hierarchy in use since 2003, this is a letter from 2015, but BART's access hierarchy in use since 2003 and attached here as exhibit A, prioritizes pedestrian access over bus and shuttle access. And per BART's access hierarchy, bus and shuttle transfer facilities may not be prioritized to the detriment of pedestrian access. The following more accurately reflects the relative value of buses and shuttles as station access modes and provides bus and shuttle transfer facilities reasonably, reasonably near station entrances on both 
the east side and west side of Millbrae Station. So that's documentation to the city as the city was formulating its plan. So I guess in response to some of the public comment, this isn't new, the staff's been working very, very hard, um, has coordinated with the transit agencies. And I think the last question in terms of the, I think Mr. Chen uh, made a comment about the intermodal working group. Um, that was a project that the city was the lead agency on. And we had hired um, the firm Kimley Horn with participation of the uh, transit agencies. And as a result of that plan, we made the decision that um, the plan, the best plan for station access is adopted in the Millbrae stationary specific plan. The best access to the station is the approved realignment of California Drive. You cannot get a better access to the station based on BART's hierarchy for pedestrian and bike access than a realigned road that's tangent and contiguous to the access point, maintaining all of the elements that were in our 2001 kiss and ride agreement, as Mr. Burroughs mentioned, bus and shuttle access, the kiss and ride. So this just uh, you know, reiterates uh, Millbrae's strong commitment to access to transit on the west side of the station. So I'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Williams. Okay, uh, Councilwoman Pappen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, nicely put, uh, Mr. Williams. And um, I'd ask that you please attach to the record this evening, those letters you referenced and those quotations, as well as um, the opinion of legal counsel that Milbray was completely within their right of way and um, legally uh, to approve this project and move ahead with it. We are looking forward to um, actually making the project approved a reality, providing 444 new housing units and trying to preserve existing housing along the corridor. Uh, extremely important to not only the governor's requirement, the legislative requirements as far as housing goes, um, and our uh, arena numbers as well. So this is an amazing project, which uh, I know uh, MTC, everybody developing along the transit corridor, which is exactly what the city of Millbrae uh, is trying to do here as far as our economic recovery. This is, again, this was noticed days ago uh, for these transit agencies, some now coming forward uh, with a new concept. Um, it's been in existence, as was noted, for a very, very long time. I do find the uh, letter from BART quite interesting. Um, access has always been a priority to the city of Millbrae, and um, BART for one should be concerned about what they've already done at their station and the access there um, is questionable to say the least. So um, we're hoping that they work out the problems on their side. And um, we have worked diligently with all the parties and um, moving ahead here is uh, something I think is very positive for the community and as well as all the requirements that the state has put before us and um, moving forward. I think this is a great way to go about it. I'm sorry the speakers were misinformed as to uh, the right of ways and everything um, that they mentioned there. We do have the right of way and it was legally approved. So I'm looking forward, um, I would move approval of the map as presented. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councilman Pappen. Um, let's go to Vice Mayor Schneider. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things before moving on this. For the public, the land that BART is in question was Millbrae's land, which was given to BART at no cost to build the BART station. The condition was they would give us the land back as well as the other transportation partners. Is that correct? That is correct. Tom, that is correct. I, correct. I think part of the problem for our public is understanding 
what has been going on for over 22 years. In fact, I'm gonna guess that it's been 24 or 25 years in the planning for this. 25 years that California was going to be straightened. That same straightened road is safer for bicyclists as well as pedestrians and is discussed in bike pedestrian county plans. So this is not something new. Uh, it is disappointing that uh, we have been on hold for over a year on this. This is a time when because of COVID, we could be breaking ground on the west side of our BART station. We could be bringing in, I believe it's $16 million to the city in developer fees. We could be getting the bike path. We could be getting the 444 or 488 housing units, 15% low affordable, as well as valuable commercial land. But we came to play, but nobody would play with us. And it's time to move forward on this. So I'd love to second the motion. And I'd actually like to throw something in that sounds a little frivolous, but in light of our new reality and recognition of, of our people of color in our community, Councilwoman Pappen had recommended to a group that we find a street and name it Harriet Tubman Way. I think we should rename our entire section of California, uh, Harriet Tubman Way from Murchison to El Camino Real. I think it's very appropriate given that high-speed rail promised us an underground station and underground tracks. So the, the, uh, the message is just beautiful. So I thank you, Councilwoman Pappen. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate the, uh, the word play there uh, and the symbolism. Um, the, unfortunately, that's not on the agenda tonight, but um, something to consider down the road. Okay, so we have a motion from Councilwoman Pappen and a second from uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Lee? Aye. Councilmember Pappen? Aye. Councilmember Aliba? Aye. Vice Mayor Snyder? Aye. Mayor Holliber? Aye. The resolutions um, approving the precise alignment plan for the California Drive from El Camino Real to Irwin Place in compliance with the approved Mowbray Station Area Pacific Plan passed unanimously. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. let's Mayor? move on to Mr. Yes, Mayor, can Councilman I... Pappen, yes. Yes, can we please just note for the record here, there was some concern about high-speed rail there and um, the city will be presenting their objections to the one and only proposal by high-speed rail and we will clearly note that as presented in the current EIR, high-speed rail does not have the right of way to the private property as they have presented in their EIR. And that is very misleading uh, to the public. So we will be presenting all of those facts and hopefully getting them up on our website that there is no ownership to the blocks and blocks of um, development and the future housing that um, High Speed Rail has no stake in that game. So if we're going to get that on the record, thank you, sir. You have a lovely uh, dotted line over their parking lot where um, hypothetically development could come in at some point decades down the road. Okay, let's go to council comments and maybe we can begin with uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Dear. Okay. Um, for anybody who is still listening, we are bringing back the ground based noise meeting, uh, which has to do with airport facility and airplane noise. It'll be this Thursday at three o'clock. I do not yet have the Zoom call in, but I will try to get it posted on next door. So Burlingame, Hillsborough, Milbrae, San Bruno, those of us who are most affected by that. It's been interesting that with the reduction in air flight, you can, it's so much quieter now that if you pay attention, you can tell where each noise increment comes in. So you can tell what the trains are contributing, what BART is contributing, what frankly right now 101 is contributing, and then what the, the airport buildings themselves contribute as well as the airplanes. So this Thursday, we will be talking about the outline of a 
study proposal. It's a spectral analysis that's intended to look at different kinds of noise and what plants might best absorb that noise and make more of our neighborhoods more livable. So anyone who is interested in noise, please um, make sure you reach out to me. And as soon as I get the Zoom link, I will send it through to you. Normally those meetings are here in Millbrae, but they'll be postponed. On the same noise area, uh, with my hat on on the county bicycle pedestrian committee there are two new grants coming forward one is from the transportation authority another is from the county itself so for our staff no sleeping no resting in august because these both have turnaround times in uh, mid April, mid august they are looking for shovel ready as shovel ready as possible which to me is probably our san anselmo reach which is part of the commute line to get bikers, bicyclists off of very dangerous El Camino Real and get them into a safer place of riding and eventually connect to California or the new Harriet Tubman Lane on there. Um, at the same time, this one of the staff persons is also working on managed lane. So I, I am so happy to know that Millbury is gonna get one teeny weeny noise win. And that is the managed lane project. When it is completed, it will be uh, rubberized asphalt. If rubberized asphalt can absorb a lot of the automobile noise, and then in fact, they're gonna be repaving both 101 North and South, all the additional lanes with rubberized asphalt. So in one tiny way, in a few years, we will be slightly quieter. The, the bad news is faster cars make more noise than slower moving cars. Uh, with that, I also attended the Millbury Historical Society's board meeting last week to di discuss high-speed rail. Uh, high-speed rail intends to move the station 40 feet farther west and 100 feet farther north. It turns out that's getting a little bit closer to where it used to be because BART moved the station. Now, originally, high-speed rail was going to move the train station to Burlingame. So maybe high-speed rail thinks that they've made one concession. What they didn't include in the high-speed rail documents is the outside features of the museum. So there's quite a bit of work left to do there. And I want to thank Joe Terezi, who uh, met with the city and myself. We met with staff on Friday to talk more specific about high-speed rail comments. This Thursday is the open house for high-speed rail. And I have hopefully worked with Tom to try to get an open house specifically for the residents on Hemlock, the residents on Aviador, as well as the rest of Bayside Manor, the streets that tee into Hemlock and possibly Marina Vista. In High Speed Rail's current plan, they entirely forget that we have a park called Monterey Park right next to the railroad tracks. They just ignore that one entirely. So to get those people together, get everybody together and talk about what the impacts from High Speed Rail will be on their neighborhood. We need our residents to step up. No vacation in August. This is crunch time. Uh, with that, uh, Airport Noise Roundtable will be back in August. It'll be virtual. And I think that's quite a bit. OK, thank you. Uh, thank, you. About, uh, thank you very much. Let's go to uh, Councilwoman Oliva. Thank you very much. And um, just an FYI, while we're doing council comment, uh, council member, or Vice Mayor Schneider, I did get a invitation for a special committee on the uh, airport uh, round table. So I'm not so sure if it's supposed to be for you or me. I'll send it off to you later. Um, with Thank that you. being said, Changing I staff. the Sal board we need Pardon me? New staff, temporary staff. All the county staff have been loaned for COVID, so others keep filling in. So that's probably what happened. They found an old document. Sorry, Councilwoman. No, no problem. I'll make sure you get it. So with regards to what, what I did uh, for the last couple of weeks was um, mostly um, attended a heart board meeting, uh, the heart board finance subcommittee of which I'm on. And obviously there's all kinds of issues with regards to finances and budgets going on. Um, Sal also, Sheriff's Activity League, um, they are um, doing whatever they can to keep these young kid, young children busy. And the staff is come up with some super creative ideas. And um, they 
definitely have their hands full. Our, our main event of which everybody here has attended and I invite the public whenever we get to do it again to attend. It's a wonderful event in Redwood City. Um, it obviously has been canceled. Um, I, I, I just wanna take a, a moment for some personal, personal comment here with um, being able to really walk the city. And um, every morning been walking from one end to the other end, from the office to the other office and very early in the morning. And I, I just wanna make a comment about what's going on with our homeless situation. And it's, it's horrific. It, early in the morning by nine o'clock, um, I actually had mentioned to council member Happen that I was going to make like a book of these people, these beautiful people that are in such dire need of help. And I couldn't, I couldn't take it to pick up the camera because as council member Pappen called it, it was inhumane. And um, we have a problem. We have a huge problem. And they are people that are living in, living in Millbrae. There are people. So we have to do something about this. And they're not here because they chose to live here. They're here because of BART. So um, I want to I make sure that this gets to be one of our priorities in our lives to take care of these people that are living in the streets of Millbrae. And um, I don't want to end it. I don't want to end my public comment with, you know, the, the, the ugliness of that because I pass these people looking at things like La Colina and Fiddler's Green who are extending to make a living and make a business and make our, our, our city beautiful. So obviously we have great things that we can pass in our city and we need to be grateful that we are so um, lucky to be able to patronize these beautiful places, but we can't forget or we can't we can't really enjoy at full potential if we're getting people dropped off that need help and we don't have the facilities for it. So I love Millbrae. I'm grateful to be here, but we got a lot of work to do. And that's one of the things that I really want to take on. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Oliva. Um, let's go to uh, Councilwoman Pappen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have been working diligently with the Blue Ribbon Transportation Recovery Committee. And as most people know, we have about 27 different transit agencies throughout the Bay Area and ridership is down by 90 plus percent on all of them. And the funding from the federal government just to keep them going is quickly dwindling. Sadly, Caltrain may be the first one to fall off the cliff as far as a lack of funding. And um, there's just no money out there right now to keep these agencies going. But the first priority to the Blue Ribbon Commission is public safety. That's public safety of the operators and the riders. So I am asking the San Mateo County community, because many people still have to take public transportation, whether it's our buses, Samtrans, Caltrain, or BART, please take pictures for me. If you see that public safety is not first and foremost, the top priority for these agencies, because they are representing to this commission that I'm a part of, that they're doing their best to ensure everybody's safe and they're cleaning the trains and everything like that. And what I'm hearing from the public is that that's not true. So if you would, please send me pictures because we have communities in need that are forced to take public transportation to their frontline jobs and we need to keep them safe. And that's our obligation. So I'm asking you to please send me your information about these agencies because they're representing that they're doing their best here, but I'm hearing from the operators that they're still all in danger and it's not what we wanna hear here. So that's the top priority there. 
Uh, in addition, I want to announce that um, the Millbrae Lions and the Millbrae Recreation Department are having their first drive-in movie on August 14th at the parking lot near City Hall there. So please go online to the city um, website there. Uh, Space is limited. They'll be showing Toy Story 4, uh, one in a ballot for the community. So join us. It's going to be fun, uh, socially distancing and safe, uh, good event to bring the community together and get people out there enjoying um, each other and kind of just waving to one another. But um, it's been worked in San Mateo and other cities. So we're hoping uh, it'll be a great event here as well. And thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Yes, um, we are keeping the Black Lives Matter and anti-racist Millbrae neighborhood group uh, going because the conversation has been very beneficial and hopefully will result in significant changes so that we can bring the whole community together here. And that's the goal. And I did recommend that since we have the largest intermodal center west of the Mississippi, that we rename one of the straight streets in our station area after Harriet Tudman, who was the leader of the Underground Railroad. So it seemed very significant and also would be informational to keep the discussion moving along. So I hope that at a future meeting, we can um, do that. And again, uh, the council is working very hard to keep everyone safe and bring the community together. So it is, um, we are united in all of this as we are united in making sure that we get this housing development moving along as quickly as possible because we've added to childcare tonight and we're adding to hopefully um, the housing numbers and we're moving ahead as best we can. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Tappan. Um, let's go to Councilman Lee, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for those people who uh, didn't have an underground railroad per se in the 1860s, but uh, basically here at Tubman uh, helped smuggle uh, uh, slaves into the North and uh, into freedom. So um, in case some people don't know that history. So uh, it was very uh, perilous and uh, dangerous work. Um, and uh, she, was, uh, she was herself black. So um, that makes it even more uh, remarkable. So thank you. Um, so also about Caltrain, um, it's a, it covers three counties, but San Mateo were the ones who put the money up front to make it happen in the last couple, last decade. And uh, San Francisco, and Santa Clara still owe San Mateo County money and have not paid their fair share for, uh, for Caltrain train. So to me, I think that they need to be, they need to, to really step up. Um, I know San Francisco just recently declined to put a measure on the ballot to pay for Caltrain. So um, I think that this outrageous that they think that, uh, you know, San Mateo County should be uh, be the, um, the county that has to uh, um, keep the whole train system going. I think that uh, is a valuable asset to the whole peninsula and everybody should do their part. Um, and uh, speaking of doing a part, uh, ABAG after one of their meetings, uh, ABAG Associated Bay Area Governments, which uh, represents 150 cities in the Bay Area, um, I being one of the representatives, they have found a way to not increase uh, uh, their dues. There was a big uh, discussion about that because the uh, lack of funding from the impacts of COVID, a lot of people were concerned that it wasn't a good idea to ask for ra uh, uh, raises to, do to city's dues. And what uh, ABAG does, uh, does for the, the 150 cities is that they help do planning, they help uh, put out research, they help insurance, they provide insurance, they provide a whole bunch of uh, services to help supplement cities uh, uh, services. Uh, the other thing is the uh, Peninsula Clean Energy. They have allocated $150,000 to buy batteries for low income house houses with medical dependents. So this is for, for uh, if there's a blackout 
or a gray out, that people who are, depend, who are dependent on devices that need electricity, that they have a, uh, a dependable safety device to help run their health equipment. So um, anybody who's interested should, should go to the Peninsula Clean Energy website and look that up. Uh, the, the, I'm not sure it's up and running yet, but that they have agreed to do that. And I think that is a great project. Um, and I think anybody who's a caretaker or has anybody at home, or you know, if you are a person who, who needs, uh, who has an oxygen uh, machine or has some sort of medical device that needs electricity, um, please go there and uh, apply for those grants. Councilman Lee, I'm yes, sorry please. to interrupt. Are those four people in areas that have already been marked out as um, public safety power shutoff zones? No, I, I don't think that they've gone to that detail. I don't okay. think, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think it's case by case spaces. So I think anybody who applies for a grant um, can, you know, I mean, I can probably, you can probably get get one if, if and I know that you have a dependent who, who, who can, you know, somebody who can benefit, so. I hope you Elaine, can. I'm sorry, and, and it's really cool. They're solar powered batteries, so it's it's a win win there. I sent you items for the fire subcommittee. Can we add that to the fire subcommittee discussion? Sure. Now that almost the whole west side of Millbrae along 280 is part of the WUI program now, the Wildland Urban Interface Fire Zone, and therefore, in theory, maybe will be more of the Public safety power well, shutoff. That was one of the that was one of the uh, uh, motivating factors for this program is the fires, and they realized that uh, a lot of people who uh, lost power didn't were uh, dire straits. So, um, Peninsula Clean Energy wants to help bridge that gap. Um, okay, I think that's that's the main part. Now, let's thank uh, uh, Councilman Papin and uh, City uh, and McKinsey Brady for putting together this helping to put together the drive-in uh, movie, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, real quick. Uh, yeah. Don't, yeah, Council, Member, Council Member Lee and I will be meeting the subcommittee with the school district, so hopefully we'll have some additional information. Um, sadly, the school board had a meeting and only 100 people could get on there, so we want to get out as much information as we can, so we'll look forward to hopefully getting us something up on the city website. We have a meeting, I believe tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Thank you, sir. Uh, they do have a new, uh, uh, they do have a new uh, district and superintendent uh, replacement for Vaughn. It's uh, Miss French, Debbie French. So we look forward to meeting her. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Lee. Okay, um, so last week I attended the uh, Caltrain and High Speed Rail uh, local policymakers group. Um, There's a discussion about Caltrain's um, dire financial state that um, Councilwoman Pappen and Councilwoman Lee um, brought up uh, this evening. Um, it looks like today the San Francisco Board of Supervisors did um, a, a vote to approve the potential sales tax measure, but that it would be tied to governance changes in um, Caltrain and it would be held in an escrow account until, um, until uh, governance changes are made. Um, that is inconsistent uh, with the state law um, that uh, Senator Jerry Hill carried um, that allows Crane to um, place the eighth cent sales tax on the ballot. Um, so we will see if there's going to be any movement at all or any compromise between the three counties between now and uh, the ballot deadline in early um, August. Um, there was also discussion about um, some improvements to Caltrain and uh, going along with the uh, business plan in conjunction with the business plan. Um, one of the items that was mentioned was improving the coordination between Caltrain and BART at Millbrae. Um, it has often been a sort of a clunky um, transfer going from one uh, transit use to another. A lot of people miss their trains um, if one is running even you know, a minute or so late. Um, so hopefully that can be improved. It's uh, been something that probably should have been working on 20 years ago, but glad to see that um, it has come up in the planning for the business plan. Um, so he also attended the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, they discussed uh, sort of conceptual designs for a dog, dog park in the um, San Francisco PUC property behind um, Green Hills Park. There would be uh, conceptually the plan shows two 
um, areas, one for larger dogs and one for smaller dogs, each separate enclosures. Um, access, I believe, would be from um, Magnolia from the Green Hills Park side. Um, but again, that's just conceptual at this time. Um, there's also some per capita funding from Proposition 68, the Parks and Water Bond approved by voters statewide a couple of years ago. Um, there's per capita funding that goes to each city based on population. And there was discussion about potentially using that funding for um, improvements to Mills Estate Park. Um, a lot of work that needs to be done there. Apparently there's an irrigation system uh, installed underground that has not been um, in, in service in about 20 years. Um, so a lot of work that we may need there. It could be potentially a good um, soccer field. I know there's a, a need for additional field space throughout the city. Um, it'd be great views from up there, looking out on Death Bay. Uh, see, I also attended the Sister Cities Commission meeting last week. Um, similar discussion to what we had tonight at this council meeting regarding the various friendship cities. Um, those con confirmation of the two um, friendship cities that are being added, as well as um, recommendation to um, retire the dormant cities. Um, so Councilman Lee and I uh, attended the technology subcommittee, um, and we discussed um, reviving the data center RFP. It looks like that will be re-released in late, probably late August or early September. And our staff is working with um, a couple of uh, experts in the field who have worked on data centers in the past um, and can provide a bit more um, you know, technical expertise uh, to the RFP to help, as well as um, potentially um, sort of marketing services to help get it out to more um, potential proposers and to get more interest because um, that's a great uh, location that we have. There's certainly a great need for um, additional uh, cloud computing and server space um, these days, especially with so many people working remotely and I'm sure telecommuting, um, you know, even as people begin to go back to work, there will probably be a large uh, telecommuting uh, element uh, to our work in the future. Um, all right, and I think we, we will go ahead and adjourn Mr. Mayor, and perhaps we Mr. can Mayor, I'm sorry to so long. memory of uh, yes, Councilman Lee. I'm sorry to prolong it, <laughs> but also want to mention that uh, 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 the mayor has been working on uh, getting downtown Wi-Fi uh, for some time, and uh, that we're going to have a um, some sort of a special ceremony to commemorate the uh, the uh, system going on online in the future. Um, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, has not been announced yet. Um, so I think, and we want to keep the census. We will go going, ahead and close the meeting tonight. And uh, I'm sorry. Want to reiterate the census still going? The census is still going. Yeah, you can go to census.gov if you've not already filled it out. You know, San Mateo County, I believe, has the highest um, census return rate so far in the state. So let's keep it up and let's make sure everyone is counted. Mr. Mayor, just to brag about Millbrae, um, we're higher than the counties. That, uh, I think we will adjourn the meeting and perhaps we <laughs> I, I tried to close three times already, but go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, just to brag about Millbrae, we're higher than the county. So yes, final comment, we need to keep Mr. It going. We're at almost 80%. What percentage so are we at? Almost, almost 80? at 80%. So we need to keep it going. So good yeah. job. All right. Let's try to get that out on social media. And uh, I guess there's a lot of people that don't follow the census probably aren't necessarily on social media but let's do what we can uh, to, to get that out there all right with that we will close the meeting and let's um, adjourn in in memory of congressman uh, john lewis who passed away uh, last week one of the great um, titans of the civil rights movement I believe the youngest speaker at the um, march in washington also led the march across the edmund pettus bridge and was brutally attacked um, but fought through it and went on to serve uh, nearly 40 years in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives, was known as the conscience of the Congress. So in his memory, as he said, um, oftentimes make trouble, but make, make good trouble. Do it for uh, the betterment of the community. And I think um, hopefully in that spirit of, um, of, uh, of working to, to, to better our community, we can all um, help 
to, to do our part in that and, and to get through this um, crisis that we have right now. All right, so let us adjourn and uh, we will have a, a special meeting, um, details still uh, TBA uh, on August uh, 4th, or sorry, August uh, 4th, yes, next Tuesday. Good night, everyone. Thank you.